there is a new ladder leader. It is Port Adelaide sitting pretty after winning 11 in a row as they head into the bye. David King is alongside of me and joining us live in the studio is the chairman of the Port Adelaide Football Club, David Kosh. Koshy, thanks for stopping by. Nice to chat, guys. Firstly, for, one, for once, I'm... I can do you and talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I want. Like. Firstly, like it's it's just an extraordinary run, and we, we we don't need to give you any more pats on the back than what you've got. But we just have to say, it was what you did on TV for twenty one years was extraordinary. Oh, and if you. you last that long, you are an absolute superstar. <laughs> so, congratulations from everyone at SEN, oh, and I, I mean that it. genuinely. And there's a lot of fans of yours that listen to our program as well. Are you sleeping in? Like, do you find, how has yes. it been? Yeah, yeah, no, no shadow of a doubt. Um, I thought I'd miss the routine of getting up because I'm a very process-driven person. That's the way I think. So Tuesday morning after a long weekend, set the alarm for 6.30. First time in 20 years, I slipped through the alarm. <laughs> <Very> <laughs> I could not believe it. So it's amazing how you, your body just yeah. unwinds, which is good. So, right. And I'm able to... Uh, to go to a Thursday night home game, which is great. So will you spend more time in Adelaide now? Do you think? Uh, yeah, 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 we will. And, um, you know, I'm here through a lot of the weekend. We've got our AFLW family day tomorrow and things like that. So, uh, And I've got the family businesses. So I've sort of left one job and mm. still got the other couple. Mm. All right, well, let's talk some footy, Koshy. All right, fry me. Maybe you didn't even <laughs> expect it would be going this well. Is that fair? Uh, I don't think anyone... It, would have expected it going this well. You know how superstitious we all are. We're, you know, just as you get a bit cocky, the the footy gods will, will knock you down. Um, but yeah, delighted with the way it's going. The whole organisation is going well at the moment, and that's what we always strive for. That it's organisation first, first on field and off field, uh, playing group, coaching group. Yeah. Or hitting their strides, which is great. Koshy, great to chat. And I second everything that uh, Kane just went through then. And a couple of people are twi- uh, texting in wanting to know who the cash cow is. We'll get to that later on. <laughs> um, can, can we uh, go? Zach Bubbles at the moment. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very good. Can, can we go backwards to go forwards? Can can yep. you can you step us through the review of last year's performance? What needed to change, and what you decided to implement? as part of that change and what you've what's realised itself okay. in the first 15 weeks? Okay, there, there's no there's no you at the Port Adelaide Club. Uh, it's, it's a we. Uh, it's a collective decision. We have really good people in really good roles and I take their advice. And at the end of last season, and like we, do, we don't whinge about it at all. Um, it's just part of footy. It's the luck of footy. We had so many collision injuries last year. If you if you get soft tissue injuries, you, you blame your high performance team uh, and your medical staff. We had collision injuries just because of the game. It set us back and we always thought that our improvement would come internally from uh, our younger players and, and players coming back. So we were really positive for this year uh, going forward. We just had to um, ignore the emotion. Uh, footy's an emotional game. Everyone has an opinion. Everyone has an emotional opinion. It's up to me to do what's best for the club, to take the emotion out, to look at the data, to look at the facts, uh, set a strategy and stick to it. But we do it as a collective. And, um, you know, we've got, I think, the best footy manager in the country and Chris Davies, uh, Cos Cardone, who's chair of our football committee, um, uh, Richo. It's, we, we do it all together. But there must have been. And I'm not. I'm not talking ill of Ken because he's he's had a wonderful mm-hmm. tenure at uh, at Port Adelaide. But it, there must have been the question asked after a decade with the same man: mm-hmm. Is this guy taking us to the promised land? And, and how did mm-hmm. how was that question answered? For, funnily enough, we question all of ourselves whether uh, at the end of each year with a review, we're not a club that makes knee jerk reactions during the era club that that waits till the end of the year and then we do an assessment and uh, our assessment of Ken is that you know with those sorts of injuries and what happened last year um, he he is a great leader of young men the players still play for him have always played for him over that 10 years every single game I don't think there's one example where he's lost the confidence in the players. Mm. Um, he's like a father figure to them, and 
the young blokes. Yes, they're, yes, they're elite footballers, but the young men, and he's more than just a coach. So that's why we made the decision we made in terms of, of looking at Ken's future right back in January, a collective decision, Ken, Chris Davies, Cos, myself, Richo, to say, we are going to give this group absolutely clear air. We're going to take all the speculation off, off the table. We've got a plan. We're not going to talk about coaching until August. Um, um, things got very emotional in the first couple of, year, couple of rounds. We ignored it. Um, things are getting emotional again at the other end of the spectrum, and we're ignoring it as well. We are all, as a collective, comfortable with the strategy that we decided on. I'm pretty happy with the way it's working out. I don't think anyone can question that. And there's no reason to change it. So what happens all. in August, Koshi? Or August okay, will come? We, we, uh, August will come. We'll sit down. We'll assess the season as it's gone through, and then we'll make a decision. And again, it's a collective You'll make decision. a decision... In August, whether he coaches, well, oh, that's the target we've set out, set ourselves. So but we we will analyse it in August because, okay, um, at this time last year, some clubs resigned mm. coaches uh, because they are on a roll, um, and then changed their mind two months later. Where we're not a club like that. Uh, I still get spooked by twenty eighteen when we're eleven and four and didn't make the finals. And at the end of that season, we made some um, pretty dramatic changes to the culture of the playing group, which set the foundation for where we are today. Um, we think long term, and it's not just based on one criteria. It's a whole set of complex criteria. But what happens Every if you finish top four uh, and August comes and it's late August and you're on the cusp of finals and you don't think he's the right coach, but you've finished top four and you've got a premiership to win. It's going to be a really awkward yeah, one for you to manage. Yeah, well, uh, we've managed awkward situations in the past. and Is there a know, chance I'm, that you I'm could not, move the coach on I'm when not, you're coaching I'm for not, a premiership in the top four? Not even going there. Right. Not, I'm not, literally not even thinking about it. Is the question Not fair, even though? thinking about it. It is clear, clear air for me, for the coaching group, um, and for Ken. We're focused on one thing, extending that winning run, mm. and we're all superstitious, the longer it goes, <laughs> those mm. are more nervous, <laughs> nervous we get. Um, and that, that's just football. But seriously, um, I don't think like that and operate what like more that. Do and we don't, see don't as a group. So what you, more do you need to see, sorry, Kingy, now? What more evidence do you need between now and August to give you the confidence one way or the other? Uh, that we keep being successful. That the, um, that the team... Um, still plays with the confidence that they are now. If they keep keep rolling like mm. it is at the moment, and um, and you know a lot can happen in the second half of the season, so we don't know. And remember, it's not just me making this decision. Oh, yes, Ken it is, is completely. Coaching. We no, know it's it is. not. It's it's Ken is completely on board yeah. with this strategy, completely on board. We discussed it back in January that this was the way to go. We're a respectful club to every single person that um, uh, that is employed by but us. But plans and can change. If you had a two-year contract in front of him now, do you suspect he'd sign it? Look, it's hypothetical. Uh. I'm not even thinking about it. I could fall under a bus, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't even contemplate it. It's, it's, And this is the reason we set this strategy back in January. Because everyone will have an opinion. Everyone will throw what ifs up. Not interested in what ifs. Um, we have a plan. It's working. We're going to stick to it because that's the sort of club we are. Koshi, do you regret not saying September instead of August? No. no. So no. you'll make your decision before well, the now, now you're getting down to weeks. Well, I am. <laughs> well, there's some pretty, there's some pretty, there's we some even, pretty we important don't weeks have, in we September, don't even, Koshi. I know we don't even have a day yet, um, and September is, uh, 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 as you know, a completely different competition. And and you know you go into September, it is. Do you have injuries? Whatever. Who who knows what is going to happen? But you'll make that but decision before then. Uh, we've set the time of August, and that's just what we did. And you can you can read the tea leaves in that as much as you like. 
but that's just what we decided back in January, and we're going to stick to it uh, because we wanted the question taken completely off the table. Yeah, you've done that. Ever, I think you've ever, done that. You've done a great yeah. job with that. But I just wonder, with the discussions you're going to mm. into in, 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 into in August, that they, will they have a bearing on what the finals uh, outcome will be? I mean, it'd be silly to... It'd be silly to say, if you finish the top of the table and, you, and you, you're flying and then you bomb out of the finals, will that impact anything in, in the discussions you'll be having? It will be one of a number of factors that we will look at. Mm. And it's not just one. It's not dependent on one thing. It is, we look at it holistically. Um, with Footy clubs are just moving. There are so many moving parts. And to get it right, once you get it right, you've got to... You know, you thank your lucky stars. Um, and there will be lots of considerations in August. We'll take it into account. But frankly, I'm not even thinking about it at the moment. Okay. I'm enjoying the run. Um, I'm enjoying the way that we're playing. I'm enjoying how the entire coaching group is going. And it's it's not just one person involved. It's, it's um, like Chad has developed. Corns has developed so much as a line coach in the forward line. Chris Davies is sort of the general of, of the box, always has been over the years. You've got Bass at the top of the game. You've got Josh coming in. And the transcripts I, I read of each game um, between the coaches, um, with Kenny on the bench, there's no disconnect between him and the coaching box at all. Mm. It's it's almost been seamless. It's Ka terrific. Koshi, would you mind sticking around? I want to speak to you about other issues, if that's okay, in relation sure. to the game. Yeah. If you've got another the GFC that's minutes. coming, the financial crisis that's coming. <laughs> all, all, all of that. Now you're in my <laughs> wheelhouse, <laughs> Kingy, you beauty. The Port Adelaide chairman is David Kosh. There's lots of other issues I'd love to get his thoughts on, just game-related um, on the other side of this. Can so I give a big shout-out? Yeah. Shout-out to Mick. I love seeing your text messages going through. Mick goes... That was the biggest bullshit interview ever. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pity a chairman couldn't speak with the honesty like your coach does. Absolute garbage. <laughs> Morning to you, Mick. Really good. I said, I said to Koshi, you get real-time feedback <laughs> on there. Don't take too much notice. Oh, I know text. about that. Oh, Let me tell you. My goodness. It's quite good fun, though. <laughs> hey, you said something God, a fortnight or so ago mm. which resonated with me about teams rebuilding Yep, and how Port Adelaide will never rebuild uh, no. under your watch. No. Explain to me that. Expand on it. I've always, uh, good clubs don't, uh, like Geelong never talks about rebuild. Swans have never talked about rebuild. I, I think rebuild is an excuse for failure. Um, uh, people are asking for a free pass and say, we're not going to make finals because we're rebuilding. Well, if, if you're not in the game, to at least aim for finals. And, you know, it's a, a common mm. theme from Ken saying we start the year wanting to make finals and then win enough games to get high up in the finals to uh, to compete in September. That's always been our view. And, yeah. I'd, Is that I'd, a shot at Adelaide and Hawthorne? And no, no, no. It's not a shot, it? shot at anyone. I'm a big believer in culture. And it's – and football clubs and football departments and organisations um, – are really, are really fragile because of the scrutiny they're under. And you've got to have a strong mindset. You've got to have a strong culture. You know, in the, as I said before, in 2018, we really targeted uh, culture in the mm. playing group. And, and our uh, success today and in the last couple of years, bar last year, has been based on that decision at the end of 2018. Koshi, if you made the grand final and weren't playing Collingwood, would you ask for the prison bus? No. Uh, because we're an AFL club and we respect the heritage of the prison bar and the magpies. We play in it every day in the sample, uh, every week in the sample. We elevate it to the national stage in what we see as the, as the pinnacle of of South Australian football, a showdown, our showdown once a year, um, but we're we're not we're not defined by the prison bar. The prison bar is a really important part of our heritage and our history, and we respect it. But you know, we respect our AFL history too, and for um, 
for a grand final, my view. Um, and I said before, it's not always my view. It's a, a collective agreement. Uh, my view is that we respect the AFL Guernsey in a grand final. How important is that jumper commercially <laughs> to the club? Like, you can't get them. They, they just the sell out well. Yeah, how much money do you make off that Guernsey? Well, I'm not going to tell you how much, but I look at the budget regularly, and, and this year we've had to take it out of the budget for our retail sales because of, you know, our, our marketing team, we're going, that was a free kick that uh, Jeff very kindly allowed us to do it. We've got a new batch that just arrived in this week, so you if you didn't... Get some previously. Um, now there's a whole bunch more there. Gosh, I know you answered this before. I, I, I just need. I'm just struggling to get my. You're, head. Not, you're not coming back <laughs> no, to August no, no. again. I am because it's, it's oh, almost. Kingy, it's it's you're almost like a, no, you're like a dog with a bone. Well, I am because it's an important time of year. It's almost yeah. like the games in August are going to be more important than the games in September for the coaching. No, decision. no, because we're going to be looking at the the year in its entirety, and including we're finals. Be, well, I'm I'm not a soothsayer, so I don't know what finals are, are going to look like. But it is we've set this this deadline mm -hmm. uh, for good or bad, and we're sticking to it. And you could throw up every what if scenario you like, but no, no. we just don't. We I just, just don't. The year in totality was. Well, I told it, you, it, it's, perfect. It's yeah, perfect. The year in total, um, state of the group, all that sort of thing. Another one, it, another one coming through, Bitcoin or Ken Hinckley? Which do you believe in? <laughs> oh, flame and hell. That's, that's the easiest question of the whole lot, Ken Hinckley. Bitcoin is just a scam and any ad that you see me associated online uh, with Bitcoin is a Bitcoin is an absolute scam. You're not a believer. You're clearly not a believer in no, 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 cryptocurrency. No, no, I don't know whether it's the greatest investment of a generation or the greatest investment scam of a generation. I don't know who generates it. No one regulates it. And in my book, when I'm investing, there they are a whole bunch of red flags for me. Right. Shouldn't have gone okay, there. Sorry, uh, yeah, yeah, no, well, that's no, right. I'm, 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 I'm on my home patch. Have you got Bitcoin, can you? <laughs> no. Oh, come on. Hey, Koshy, do, do you – I, I know the answer, what, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Do you worry about other clubs poaching you good people? Like when oh, you have we success, right. we've got – we got a great media manager, Daniel Norton, in the room here. We have got Jason yeah. Cripps, who's done a great job with the list. We have got Chris Davies, who the <laughs> AFL would love to get their hands I know, on. No, they're all under contract. Okay, uh, yeah, for long term. So you don't worry about. Well, that. the AFL have been after Chris for a while, and we just say, hands off, and he's very happy here. I saw Jeff Parks in the rooms mm. last night. I said, where do you guys get these? You know, we have a mid-season draft. Bloke turns up for two weeks, plays on the big stage, kicks two goals. And they're, they're just the core of the organisation. These good people in good in the right position, and that's why it's so much fun to work there. What's a pass mark for the year? Well, all, as Kenny has always said, and I have always said, uh, making finals. We, we aim every year at the start of the year to make finals and win enough games to finish high up in, in the eight to give us the best chance of winning a flag. You can't do any more than that. There are so many things that get thrown up at you. If you could do that, you're pretty good. Mm. How long have you got in this role, Koshi? You've done it for a decade. It's it's a passion of yours. You, it's been incredibly well, successful in terms of getting the club back on track in totality. But how long yeah. do you want to do this for you, you personally? Oh, I'm mixed back, saying so piss off now. <laughs> no. Um, oh, no. <laughs> um, look. Uh, while no, that, that's a I, different uh, Mick, Goshi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> while, while I'm enjoying it, um, you know, I'm passionate about the club. You know, off field, we're redeveloping Alberton. We've got a 10 year plan to bring Alberton back, our spiritual home, back to its its glory days. It's, um, uh, I'm, while people want me there, I'm still really enjoying it. Well, you're doing a pretty good job. A bit more time on your hands. Once again, congratulations yeah. from everyone here for what you've done well and done. for coming through and spending some time with us this morning. Fascinating insight. We appreciate it. Thank Ch you for having me. Chat again in September, Koshi.